I don't know if you remember, but almost four months ago, I promised to have a build with this Gigabyte Mini GTX 1070 and the Cougar QBX case. There are many reasons that took me so long to complete the build, which I will explain later, but hey, I kept the promise. This video is pretty much a build log, so in the description I will have timestamp and if you want to skip to the specific part that you want to see, feel free to check it out. So let's talk a bit about SFX PC and what is a small form factor case. Many people think that the NZXT H200 or some of the MediaTX case are small form factor. They are not. According to the SFX community, a case that is less than 20 liters is an SFX case. An SFX case usually comes with heavy price tag. For example, the Luke Ghost S1, one of the most popular cases right now on the market, can easily cost you more than $200. However, if you want to build yourself a mini powerful gaming PC, there are still cheaper alternatives. If you go to Newegg and search SFX case, there are many cheap options, but I think just two cases that are worth mentioning. The first one of course is the Cougar QBX. This thing only costs around $50 to $60 and it has the same layout as the $200 N-Case M1, which I showed earlier. The next one is the Note 202 from Fractal Design. I'm not sure about the price for this case because every marketplace shows different price. But here on eBay, you can pick one up for just less than $90. And this thing is one of the most portable case that you can get right now. You can put it in your backpack and bring it to your classroom or any LAN event easily. So let's talk about the Cougar QBX. This case is the largest uh, SFX case you can find on the market. Due to its volume at 19.8 liters, it barely squeezed into the SFX realm. Due to its light price tag, unboxing this case feels very cheap. This box contains user manual, all the screws for your case, and one dust filter for your front intake 80mm fan. As mentioned about fan, uh, this case due to its volume can handle many fans. So let's dive right into what fans do I use for the build. Firstly, to cool down the CPU, I use the Noctua NHD9L, which has a dual tower design and comes with a 92mm fan. And if you want to mount an extra fan, you can use mounting handle, which is already included in the package. Also, because I use Ryzen system, I requested the mounting bracket for free from Noctua, and it took 20 days to come from Austria to America. To keep the CPU extra cool, I add one more NFA9 to the CPU cooler. And to keep uh, everything Noctua friendly, next is the NFA8, which is used for front intake. Because of the restricted airflow, I use the two NFF12 and mount them to the top of the case to provide intake air for the CPU and the power supply. I also use the cheap dust filter to keeping these two fans from getting dirty. I will use the GTX 1070 in this build and to keep the graphic card cool, I add two 120mm slim fan as intake at the bottom of the case. With all the knock tool fans, I use the Corsair Commander Pro to control the temperature of the CPU and the graphic card with the IQ software. As you already know, Noctua products are the best cooling solution due to their performance and noise, so they are very very pricey. That's also the reason why this build takes a while to get done. To fund this project, 
I used Wackbucks.com to get extra cash and bought all of these from the money that I had earned since January to April, which came around $400 total. Time for shameless advertisement. Squarebox is a site that lets you earn money by completing surveys, which I do every day. Gives you cash back for online shopping at Amazon, Newegg, AliExpress, eBay, Best Buy, Macy's, and give you extra points if you complete their daily goals. When you earn enough points, you can redeem for gift card or Visa and cash with PayPal. If you are interested in earning with Swagbucks, you can use my referral link in the description to earn extra 300 points and support my channel. Thanks! To power this system, I use my good old Thermotech 650 watt bronze non-motor power supply with flat cable. I have been using this in my Intel 7700K build. But since I upgraded my power supply, this thing just lying around. I started the build by installing all the case fans and they are set up as intake. As I mentioned, this build will use Ryzen system and I put my Ryzen 2700X with a Strix X470 Mini ITX and with these two combined, I managed to reach 4.125 GHz with 1.406 volt. Building in a tiny case like this with a non-modular power supply is truly a pain in the ass. But you can see that I managed to clean up all of those cables pretty tidy. With the cable in the back, simply slap in the case panel and everything will be in place. For the unused wires like Molex and extra SATA cables, I hide them at the exhaust of the power supply, which is why an extra fan is needed. Also, from the user manual, my power supply is listed as not compatible with this case, but you can see here that I still managed to plug in the extension power cable. However, it doesn't mean that my trouble was over. The power supply was too big. It stopped my graphic card from getting in. Ah, I'm stuck. I need a solution. And the solution is from Corsair with their 750 watt SFX platinum power supply. It's so tiny it only needs a 92 mm fan and also comes with sleep cables. With a better power supply, I thought to myself, why didn't try something juicier? And this thing came. Next, my trouble continue as my graphic card hit with the frame of the case, so could not install it even though I switched the new power supply. But lucky me, it was an easy fix. I simply saw one piece of the frame and everything was good to go. By the way, for aesthetic, I used the marker for hiding the cut. Cable management with this new power supply was much easier, so I decided to insert my strict 1080 Ti into the case. I also used double sided tape for mounting the Commander Pro. Everything fried up nicely, especially the RGB strip which make the case really shine.
However, one thing that I underestimated the temperature the 9900K was too hot it made the whole system hot the power supply hot the graphic card hot the fan ran like crazy I underclocked the CPU to 4.5 GHz at 1.20 volts temperature still got up to 90 degrees then throttle so I switched back to Ryzen replacing the 1080 Ti with the 1070 gave the case a much nicer look however when I test 4k high bitrate rendering with Adobe Premiere the temperature of the overclocked 2700X got so high up to 100 degree the system crashed so no overclock for me everything is running as stock when render 4k high bitrate again CPU was around 80 degree and the graphic card was 56 to 57 Next to the Commander Pro, you can see that I managed to squeeze my old laptop hard drive by using the case's DVD holder and gave the system another 1TB. It's possible to mod this case to make it window panel, but as I have many intake fans, the mesh is necessary to exhaust hot air, otherwise the only way hot air can escape is from the back of the case. Although this is not a big table, thanks to this baby PC, I have many room to work with and monitor size is not a problem. We are reaching the end of the video. Here's just a quick sound test of the system during my Witcher 3 gaming session. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.